hello and welcome to this wonderful episode of the official podcast 334 i believe i can't believe i remembered we are joined today by a very very handsome man he creates a lot of great content for the internet he's a very witty person he plays guitar like a goddamn angel on high and most importantly he is my partner sailing the seven seas and sea of thieves and messing with I don't know, kids trying to find treasure. It's Mr. Lyle Rath. <laughs> Lyle? Hello, you set the bar way too fucking high. These people are going to expect me to, like, be funny and no shit. And also shred. <laughs> Do you not? Yeah, well, was, he, was he accurate about they the guitar shredding? Of us. Yeah, yeah, that part's accurate. That's the only, like, one thing I'll cop to. Okay, so that's also, that's, that's good. Did you know that our superstar Andrew here also plays guitar? Have you guys shredded <laughs> together? Did. Yes, yeah. if, if you think we don't have, like, late-night, 5 a.m. conversations just sending guitars back and yeah. forth, you're, you're mistaken. It, is, a, it you... is very, very pathetic music nerd shit, because it will literally be 4.30 in the morning, and I'll just go, Lyle, look uh, at this yeah. cool guitar, and he'll go, yeah. yeah, that's cool, look at this cool guitar. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know if the <laughs> audience actually heard us, like, going off about In Flames before this, but it, it was just all, it's just all that. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's, it's like microdosing a midlife crisis. It's... <laughs> <laughs> so can can I ask when did you two meet? Uh, good we, we've been mutuals on Twitter for a while, but I, I I don't know when we actually uh, I mean Discord has a record of that I would assume. But. Well, our yeah. first I, our first date was like three months ago at the Olive Garden. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah. the, the reason I ask is Andrew's got just such a storied history of his meetups with specific like different uh, animators specifically online, like when he was. 16 meeting up in like a Denny's with a bunch of <laughs> animators from YouTube. <laughs> right, well, I'm terrible with faces, so he might have met me before, and I just don't <laughs> yeah. oh, maybe, remember. Yeah. What's beautiful is every single animator has said that when Andrew brings up the story about how he met them. He's like, "Oh, I'm just <laughs> bad with faces." <laughs> were you uh, were you at Dan Marino's in Miami about 20 years ago? <laughs> No, I don't think I can be traced back to that one, my friend. <laughs> Darn, it could have been, could have been destiny. No, I think, I think you and I were just mutuals on Twitter, and we have a lot of friends in common. And then eventually, I reached out to you over, oh God, I, something, some project I saw you in. Like, hey, I saw you play in this or make this, and how did you do that? And then uh, it spiraled into the classic, the classic like new grounds type person thing of, do you play Sea of Thieves? Of course I do. <laughs> and then fucking hopping on there and just doing dumb shit all day. The game seems fun. I still haven't tried it yet. Oh, dude, it's like a story generator. That's how I describe it to people. That's my sell for it is it's like there are mechanics of that game, but they only exist to like create friction. <laughs> so you'll bump up against other people and you'll have all this shit on your ship and you'll not want to lose it. Even though it's pretty much effectively worthless, but it just gives you, like, tension, so you're like, Oh, fuck, no! Please, don't! And then, can, uh, um, and then they everything do. Everything I've seen just seems so fun with it. We can yeah. regale them of the story of what we did when we played last time. Uh, what, what did we do? We uh, found that group of three dudes and just tried to constantly, like, sneak onto their ship, and then they started throwing a party down below, and I joined in without being invited. <laughs> it was yeah. so good. So, so Sea of Thieves is, is just kind of a game where all there really is to do is grind loot, get money, and, you know, you could do that. You could do challenges yeah. and go find treasure and whatever, but the real fun is making your entire game based on stealing it from other people. Yeah, so being pirates. We, yeah, by being pirates. So we found this group, it was he and I, and we found this group of three people, and they were, they were just doing regular stuff. And they, they were like, you know, sailing around and getting treasure and whatever. And my whole plan was to sneak onto their ship and just hide there, which is a strategy known as tucking. Because you, yeah, you tuck yeah, your character not... into a ball and uh, hide. Coincidentally, we were also tucking at the time. Yes, yes. And docking and all of those yeah. fun little actions. But I managed to get in like the decks of their ship and they just took off without knowing I was there. And at one point they locked one of their friends in the brig. 
and started playing happy birthday for him <laughs> like it was his oh. birthday so in the middle of it i pulled out i pulled out an accordion and started joining along <laughs> and they all just no. looked at me like what the fuck and they just freaked <laughs> the fuck out that i was even there Oh yeah, it's I showed you the game. happy birthday trick, right? Yeah, the happy birthday trick. Where you just play trick. the first bar over and over and over again, it drives people insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in the game, there's instruments, and you can play a bunch of different songs, and happy birthday is one of them. And one thing that we learned from a, I learned from a very good friend of ours, Michael Swain, who we had on the show a long time ago, is um, you can annoy people by hiding and pulling out an instrument and playing just the first bar of happy birthday. So it goes dun dun na 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 dun dun na 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 dun dun na na. You can just do that infinitely <laughs> yeah. without the song ever starting, and people get super fucking annoyed and start screaming on voice chat to knock it the fuck off. Yeah, but the point is, it's not about the hiding. gold; it's about that. Yeah, yeah that's what the, the game's really about. about. Controlling. Yeah. yeah. So you do that. You it's do that while you're the kind hiding. Of game that I would play solo or anything like that. It's always with people. Yeah. It's it's made for fucking with people. It's it's got a lot of tools. You can you can uh, go into someone's kitchen on their boat, and if they're not paying attention, you can put a banana on the stove, and all it will ever do is catch fire. <laughs> so you just burn their ship down very slowly without them noticing. <laughs> oh, it's there needs a great to be game. more troll games like that. There really does. There really fucking does. There's a perfect blend. Lyle, did you ever get into the Space Station 13 debauchery? I tried. Chris was into that for a while, and he tried to get me into it, but it's it, it's got a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah, it's very old. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, like, laborious to actually interact with it. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of, you have to kind of go off the honor system, too, if I recall. Yeah, like, you yeah. gotta kind of, like, hardcore roleplay and not look at certain things and... Yeah, the community, mm -hmm. like, there's very hardcore communities in that in that sector of gaming that don't like it when you, like, bend the rules. But, I also, also heard there's, yeah, like, the a power operate. creep where if you're in a server long enough, like, one furry will get in and then it'll slowly become a furry server. All furries, yeah, they, like, invite Isn't, their friends. Uh, it's, like, yeah, parasitic yeah. in nature. <laughs> Isn't the biggest server right now a furry server for Space Station 13? It probably wasn't at a point. It is now. <laughs> yeah. That's why you always have to discriminate. Yeah, all roads lead to furry infection. Never let a single one in. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the... the I know there's, there's furry, like furry servers and stuff like that and like Lyle was just saying like furries get invited on and then the furriness spreads and more furries show up until you've got like an epidemic of furries but then there's also like communities within those servers or groups of players in those servers whose only goal is to just hunt down the furries and like blast them out of airlocks and shit like that to try to like purge <laughs> oh they've the got furries. exterminators now yeah well really? they did good good at some point yeah I don't know. I don't know what the scene's like now. That sounds like a good balance between, like, the Sith and the Jedi. That seems pretty cool. <laughs> or, like, vampires and wolves. Yeah. If you want to go down the Twilight route again. <laughs> Twilight, yeah. Classic Twilight. This just reminded me, do you guys remember when we, fr well, we used to stream on, a. Uh, the official channel we used to play PUBG. Oh, yeah. We used yeah. to do, we used to oh, do yeah. a lot of wacky hijinks together. That was so fun. I do remember that. I remember when PUBG was a thing. Kaya was an animal in that. Kaya was yeah. so he was like one of the worst players I've ever seen in the game, but he was really good at <laughs> fucking with the other people. I, I yeah. still remember I still remember the ghost of good music. You had like yes. a, a kalimba or something and you would try and haunt people's buildings as the ghost of good music. <laughs> I vaguely remember a that. A friendly spirit. That's me in every game. I just Holy suck shit, at them that's so, so I still think the clips. <laughs> yeah, the clips still show up from time to time. Really the ghost boring. of good music where on the PUBG subreddit? <laughs> yeah, I'll send it to you do next you, time um, I see it. Do you remember when we would get dune buggies and try to do the coolest stunts and oh, flips yeah. and record them and shit? Yeah. Yeah, it just boiled down to us trying to break the game, really, with the physics yeah. and everything. Let's do that again with Fortnite. There's no voice chat, though, so you can't fuck with the other yeah. players as well, which is what makes that's it fun. That's the element mm -hmm. that's fun. There's yeah. no yeah. chat. No, there's no nah. VoIP, or proximity chat, rather, sorry. Voice over IP, yeah. Uh, speaking of group gaming like that, Lyle, you are a regular contributor to OniPlays. I That's am, right, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm everyone's least favorite member. <laughs> what? what makes you say that? 
Uh, I'm just Reddit repeating posts. what I hear, man. No, there, there's like <laughs> there's like a small dedicated pocket that hates me, and there's like a de- like a similarly sized dedicated pocket that loves me, and uh, they they fight all the time. Do you tend to care about that kind of stuff? Does it impact you? Oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely anti Lyle. I go on there on a sock and <laughs> fucking because these guys are not good. Their arguments suck, so I need to help them out. You're, you're, you're like the main instigator. It's just you're another yeah, guy, yeah. basically. I, I flick like 90% of those dominoes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, Lyle, guitar. Guitar, guitar. I wanted to know... This is, this is a dangerous one. Oh, let, let's, yeah, Let's, let's yeah. try not to stay on it for too long. Yeah, let's We let's don't go. have to, but I have seen videos floating around of you on the internet. There's a really good one that I think you passed to me where you did some covers of Friday Night Funkin'. That was yeah, just yeah. really, With really goddamn impressive. So I just, I just want to know your history. Like, when you started playing, how long you've been playing. Tell the folks at home how great you are, how handsome... Uh, well, okay, let me let me preface this with saying uh, I, I'm the lead guitarist of a heavy metal band. By the time this comes out, how long do these usually take to edit? Like a week. A week. Okay, maybe or maybe not we have a single out right now. A uh, band's called Petrified Giant, and I'm in it with uh, Dave from Cyanide and Happiness and this fucking amazing Australian vocalist called Marty Leith. Uh, Dave's, Dave's pretty good, too. I didn't mean to, like, downplay it, but anyway... <laughs> um, so yeah, like uh, basically, I I played guitar a little bit in like high school, junior high, and stuff like that. Um, my my original username on the internet was actually Guitar Master X Seven. Oh yeah, uh, and that's not oh, even yeah. that wasn't even me being like I'm so fucking good. The master was for Master of Puppets. Uh, fun fact. Uh, but um, that's that's not as cool. My one of my well, actually, it was my first YouTube channel name was Football Player, but I had never actually played no. football in my life. You should have stuck with that one. Uh, that's way better than Penguin Zero. True. <laughs> I mean, the, the account got terminated. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, so it wasn't my choice. Damn, it's not too late for a rebrand. You can yeah, still yeah. Go back. Football you can switch player. to it. That you got terminated. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I've just been playing a uh, guitar for a bit. Uh, maybe. I would say I was probably closer to like 18, 19. I, I bought myself a, a Jackson Rhodes, which it's like a cool, I could actually grab it real quick. Uh, people at home can't see this uh, and it's got no strings on it cause I was too lazy, but I bought this and I was like that, that was like a motivator. Cause it's like, I have this cool fucking guitar and I can't really play it very well, which is weird and embarrassing. So I was like, I got to I got to figure out how to like play fast and do stuff. Uh, and then I did that. And then so I... that's sucking your own dick too hard. Like out of 10, <laughs> how, how skilled of a guitar player do you think you are? Uh, uh, like what, what, what's like a professional guitarist normally at, right? Like I, I wouldn't say like, um, well, maybe like nine ish for like a really professional guitar yeah, player. 10 uh, is like reserved for the best, obviously. I would um, may, maybe like a strong seven. I would okay. say if I'm being realistic, this I, man's I, I more think... than a seven. Mm. Oh no, well, no. Uh, dude, th- there's like a lot of. I, I could talk about this for hours. So like, genuinely stop me if this gets boring. But like, a lot of heavy metal specifically has kind of turned into like a guitar pissing contest. Yeah. And these guys are really fucking good. Like, way better than you honestly have to be. Because if you can play Eruption, like, a regular jack-off will think that you're the best guitarist in the world. It sounds exactly the same as if you're fucking Jason Richardson or Tosin a bossy to them. But, uh, so I'm, I'm good enough to where somebody who doesn't play guitar um, will just be like, that guy is, that guy is amazing. I've, I've crossed that threshold. As far as, like, professional guitarists go, like, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of crazy music for musicians, so it's... I'm comparing myself to actual Gods. crazy savants and shit like that, but yeah. um, no, I, I, th- I think I'm, I think I'm all right, and I think like I, I'm really proud of the music that we've been writing. I think that like it, it plays into my strengths, and it, everyone's gotcha. everyone's doing a good job. So I'm as good as I need to be. Let me just, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll put it like that. Yeah, the reason why I wanted to ask was because you said that when you were 18 or 19 and you got the badass guitar, 
you didn't feel like you were like too good at it, so you wanted to get good, basically, to yeah. you know, to use the guitar well. Um, how long do you think it took you to get from that point to the point you're at now of being a seven? Uh, I got to do math on how old I am, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's what it boils no, it's, down to. It's a constant process. Um, and then there's also, there's also certain aspects. Like if you don't fucking, if you don't do something for a little while, your skills kind of yeah. atrophy. So there's yeah. points where I was probably like a little bit faster than I am now. Um, and there's points where it will, I, I know more now you never lose that. It's easy to mm -hmm. get it back, but, uh. Yeah, like, I, I, I think, I don't know, that's a complicated question. But I, I would say, if like, legitimately, if you pick up guitar and you want to just be good enough to, like, fool somebody into thinking you're good at it, like, if your goal is to play, like, Eruption, you could get there mm -hmm. in, like, six months to a year. Oh, wow. Okay. It, yeah. That's way less than I thought, yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have to write it. That's the, the there's True. tabs and tutorials yeah. online that make tabs, that easy. Uh, tabs to coincide with what you're saying make me feel like i'm playing guitar hero sometimes where once you once you kind of just memorize how to hold and move your hand to be where you want to be on the thing you can just stare at a tab and just follow it and go hey it's fucking guitar hero i'm clicking the number and it's making yeah, kind of 90 percent of them are wrong but um usually <laughs> yeah, what i try to true. do honestly is i try to like find a live video of the person playing it and I sort of, what I do is I, I, number one, I look at their hands and number two, I listen for the points where they fuck up because the points where <laughs> they fuck up, that's where I can mentally go. All right. That's like the changeover. That's the part where they go, this riff is done and this riff is start, you know, beginning. Yeah. Um, so like, cause, cause that's, that's where you always fuck up is where you mentally have to like shift gears there. Well, yeah. So that, that's mm -hmm. kind of, I, I usually do that instead of straight up looking for tabs now, uh, mm -hmm. because they're usually made by some kid in guitar pro that, uh, doesn't actually know how to play it and just figured out the notes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them are also very old and just totally like not great. Yeah. But they're, they're still a good resource. I think, especially if you're starting Oh, yeah. a great thing to look at yeah and, and especially if you're not trying to like if you're trying to play guns and roses the tab's probably going to be right yeah if you're trying to play like a gorod song or something you're yeah fucked. looking looking stuff up i have found that if you find a band that's popular like yeah, you're so set you can you can play nearly their entire catalog through tabs like it'll it'll just be dead on but you know as it gets more and more obscure it gets a little it gets a little eh, a little dicey Shaky. And then yeah. sometimes there's people like me that are just genetically not able to do it because our hands are too small. You just say that. <laughs> you, you don't even try that. It is actually uh, true. I played guitar for over a year uh, uh, back in seventh to eighth grade or eighth going into ninth grade. I don't remember now. But I reached a point where I was like, yep, I just can't play these chords. My hands aren't big enough. And I think you just give up the same thing about the NBA. Yeah. At well, well yeah. that, that one is absolutely true. And the guitar one's true too, man. It is. There is no, just simply so, there are actually just some chords my little tiny baby hands can't hit. Get a smaller guitar then. Well, it's called the ukulele. Did you make those? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't the uke um, your first like instrument anyway? Yeah. Charlie, what was that? Wasn't the ukulele your first instrument? No, fuck no. I only got oh. the ukulele as a joke. Uh, I played guitar oh. from like eighth to ninth grade. Uh, I even had a What's guitar instrument for like small hands. I meant, you I meant, um, I meant your collection of stupid instruments. Oh yeah, well, I started collecting shitty instruments just for fun, but I never learned how to play any of them. The first instrument <laughs> I ever played was the trombone, though, and I went to fucking town on that bitch. I was feeling it. I yeah, love yeah. the trombone. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I wasn't, but it was really fun. We should start a fucking <laughs> bad ska band. <laughs> yeah, you could have me on trombone and theremin. Why, why, yeah. why couldn't you get good at the trombone? Small mouth? What's the issue there? <laughs> Small lungs. Yeah, lung capacity wasn't up to snuff. I, I don't know, I just Tiny dropped lips. it. It's not exactly Stop like the... It. It's not really like, you know, a panty soaker of an instrument, right? Like, well, you, go from, you go from trombone yeah. to electric guitar. I was like, all right, this is so much cooler. And then I played You can be like the fall. George Michael of trombone, though. There's so much more yeah. room in that space. I think oh, if you walked into a guitar center... Game? I think if you walked into a fucking guitar center with a trombone and started blasting notes, people would stop and clap and No, they'd absolutely it. think that it's a terrorist attack. The trombone really doesn't what? sound that good. Like, it really... Like, even played optimally... No, but, no, but surely you could... 
tur- turn it into a comedy routine. Have you guys seen that trombone champ game mm-hmm. where people just fuck it up, but that's half the fun? That was, well, yeah. That was viral yeah. for like a week. Th- that would have been yeah. a good idea, but I was also in fucking fourth grade at the time, Kai. The last thing I wanted was people laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it didn't cross my mind. That's I wanted to be I wanted to be seen as cool, and the well, trombone okay, was not getting yeah. it done. Yeah. Fair. Well, then why'd you choose it in the first place? Uh, well, it was a mandatory band, so you had to choose uh, an instrument. So a lot of people did, like, the standard stuff of, like, percussions or whatever, and I was like, I'm gonna do trombone. Yeah, so trombone, I agree with you. I don't think that's something that you'd be able to make look cool just doing it on its own. That's more of, like, an ensemble instrument. Um, the only one that I can think of, other than guitar, piano, would be, like, saxophone. I think saxophone is one of the coolest. You should have Sax done that. Sax are cool, yeah. yeah. Saxophone mm-hmm. is pretty fucking sexy, for sure. Yeah. What are some oh, of the drums, cool drums. instrument? Yeah, drums are cool, sax is cool, guitar is cool. What's well, another cool instrument? Bass has become, become very cool. cool. Bass is cool. Yeah, Bass too. is fun as fuck. Mm-hmm. But you gotta... Yeah. I think your small hands problem would probably bite in the bass <laughs> even harder because it's a longer scale. True. <laughs> There's so many options for him, sadly. I don't know. I don't buy... I really don't buy the small hand thing. Charlie does this a lot. It, like, no, it's remember, real. It's <laughs> true. Remember the fucking animation? The way why you dropped out of, like, animation in school? You gave up after, like, six months. I gave up after two years. <laughs> what do That's you mean? I, t- I took... Because your two- hands aren't too small? No, to I animate? just wasn't... No, what? I was just... Oh. Jesus, the small hands is exclusive to just guitar. <laughs> no, th- there is like a million reasons to quit animation. I, I, I'm with him on that one. It, it was, I was just very bad at it. Well, yeah, he, but his reason wasn't good. He could have been good at it if he just kept with it. Like, that's how you develop a skill. The university program was also terrible. My professor well, had only yeah, ever made true. one short and it was a talking toilet. Like, it wasn't a good program. That, yeah, Wait, your bad. professor made the talking toilet short? Oh, do you know the talking toilet short? Yeah, that shit went hard. Yeah, yeah, that, that was fucking bomb. Yeah, that was my boy. I, I would hire well, that guy to educate if I fucking... Yeah, wait, well, there you go. <laughs> Charlie, he's a, he's a big deal, apparently. <laughs> why, do you, why don't you continue to learn from him? He was too hot. He was too far above me. I couldn't quite grasp the talent. <laughs> Someone made a good point in chat. Chris Raygun is shorter than you, and he plays guitar well. Ooh. That's that's true. He might have like freakish like ogre hands. I haven't I haven't measured up his hands. I've done the Tarzan thing recently. with him. He's got a pretty small hands. Oh, well, there we go. Maybe he has a custom guitar or something like a Louis Vuitton <laughs> guitar. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> small hands is a real a, a real plague, and I I don't appreciate you belittling the illness. Do you have a, the, the do you have a support group ability. for it? Do you have a group of friends? You mean it's like yeah, so many things I would have done if I didn't have these small hands. If only my hands weren't so tiny. Yeah, I could have become so much more. Could have been president. There was this guy online that we found who was just kind of like a like a cringe person. And his big thing was he was mad that his arms were short and he would oh, go in public. Yeah. He would go in public to like women and be like, stand next to me and put your arms next to mine. And then they would. <laughs> and then he'd be like, fuck, look at my fucking short arms. I don't remember who you're talking about. I, I don't remember his name. It's a lol cow with the whole thing. I, I mean, I remember it. I was just not saying it. Uh, but should I say it or? Should I keep? Should I keep it under wraps? I'm pretty sure when Zach Zach brought him up like three years ago now, I'm pretty sure he just like full name dropped him, which oh, is how full, I found his content. Name, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, he, he, is he putting the videos out there, or, like himself? I th- or yeah, he is. I think so. What the fuck is he, he's publicly disclosing that <laughs> he can be named? You know what? If What's... I don't, then it gives people incentive to go back and watch the Zach episode. So I'm I'm helping your metrics here by not saying All it. Right, cheers, thanks. That's Galaxy Brain. Yeah, yeah. Well, could we uh, help our metrics by saying some sponsors? You absolutely could. I would love to. This nobody episode. Ever, nobody ever is... clicks out during the sponsors. No, 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 no. <laughs> people tune in intently ears glued to their fucking speakers because it's time to talk about seat geek we were just now talking about instruments and bands and performances and i'm just gonna say it there's a few companies out there one also in particular can't name names but they they're not great you know they they happen to be who you have to get your tickets through and uh, there, there, there are some names out there that you might be familiar with who are I just not 
good at all. Just terrible, terrible companies doing awful, awful exploitative things. Evil companies. Uh, evil companies, but not SeatGeek. Because SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. It's got over 28 million downloads and more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. I'll tell you right now, I, I actually can relate to this. I'm going to a concert next month and uh, I had to go through a specific vendor because they only partnered with one to sell tickets and I won't name names, I'm not allowed, but they, uh, you know, they bought my two tickets and then at the end they said, oh, here's your fee. And I said, for what? And they didn't explain. And, and I get it, there's like a little processing thing, but this was, this was like the price of a third ticket. Yeah, and I said, it's ridiculous. what the fuck? What the fuck is this? Oh man, so maybe you should give SeatGeek a try and see if it's maybe the most convenient, most easy on the customer, most well-reviewed ticket app you can think of. Each ticket is going to be rated on a scale from 1 to 10 when looking for the value of the tickets. So you can look for a green dot, which means that it is a good, desirable ticket, maybe a nice seat that you're going to want. They are going to put all the tickets across the web in one place, so you can make sure to find everything on SeatGeek without having to shop around. And every ticket is backed by a buyer guarantee, meaning it was it is the only site that will let you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. I know that you want a better ticketing app. Well, if you use code OFFICIAL, you can get $20 off of tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code OFFICIAL. Make sure you also click the, click the link in the description. Code OFFICIAL for $20 off of your first SeatGeek order. So, good. so when you're at that concert, you're going to be thinking, God, I'm so glad I'm at this concert, and I'm so glad I use SeatGeek and not a terrible, terrible competitor to get here. But then you're going to have a panic attack. You're going to have anxiety. You're going to freak out, get in the cold sweats and say, oh, my God, I don't think I canceled my gym membership. Fuck. Oh, God, how do I do? I'm at the concert. I'm enjoying my favorite band. How am I supposed to do that? Well, take a breath, calm down, because we can introduce Rocket Money to you today. Rocket Money is a mobile app that will help you do a lot of things with your personal finance. It will allow you to manage your subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, grow your savings, and more all in one place. The biggest thing that they seem to like to profiteer, and I'm a big fan of talking about this, is they help you cancel unwanted subscriptions safely and securely. They will identify recurring charges and cancel unwanted subscriptions for you through the app, meaning you never have to get on the phone, never have to call the company that's doing it. And in this day and age where it's just so goddamn easy to forget you subscribe to something or so easy for a company to say, oh yeah, we'll totally cancel it. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Rocket Money is there to help you with that. They'll also let you set budgets that automatically monitor your spending in certain categories, give you a spend to earn ratio each month. They'll monitor your credit score. They'll set up a smart savings account, which will allow you to change the frequency of how you save things. They'll give you analytics of your net worth, including your cash, debts, investments, crypto, retirement accounts, etc. It is a great personal finance app with everything all in one place, and most importantly, will help you cancel those really, really awful subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. Go to rocketmoney.com official or click the link in the description to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium. But if you want to get started for free, go to rocketmoney.com official. Get your money right. So now you're having a great time with music, and your pockets are stuffed with cash because you've been monitoring your spending, well, maybe after the show it's time to relax. Maybe it's time to, you know, deal with your stress. Maybe the music was really loud and you got a, you know, got a big fucking, like, bad headache. And you're like, oh, I, I wish I had something that could help with this, with my trouble sleeping. Well, Next Evo is going to help you do that. You're going to be focusing on your stress and focusing on getting good sleep throughout the day. That's how the modern world works. There's too much shit going on. 
There's too many distractions. Well, Next Evos are going to give you a CBD brand that takes quality seriously. They test their product multiple times to ensure you get 100% of what's on the label. They also use Smart Sorb CBD, which is proven to have 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes and four times overall absorption compared to other products. They do research on their own products through four clinical trials, which is what no other CBD brand is going to do. If you're looking to upgrade your CBD and perhaps gain some help with your stress levels in your sleep, well, you're going to go to nextevo.com slash official to get 20% off of your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off of $40 or more at nextevo.com slash official. Awesome. Thank you to the sponsors. Appreciate it. Amen. All righty. Why don't we all go around the room and say something we're thankful for, aside from the sponsors? Sure. Wait, can I do the uh, sponsors? Yeah, yeah. Each of us will take a different sponsor. That sounds <laughs> we'll good. take a different sponsor. <laughs> all right, uh, Jackson, yeah, go ahead. We should start. Add, no, no, no. We should absolutely start with Lyle, since he's the guest. Okay, and, I, I am yeah. thankful uh, for the the middle person that reaches out via email for the sponsors. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! That guy's cool. Love those right. guys. Right. Person, yeah. Shout out. Yeah, thanks to those guys too. Yeah. All Jackson, right, now, Charlie. Uh, whoa, whoa, we're going way out of order. Yeah, yeah it's I, Jackson's I, I'm turn. making my own order. No, Charlie next. Yeah, this okay. is lawless chaos. Uh, I guess what I'm thankful for this week is uh, the Pinkertons. You guys <laughs> familiar mm. with the Pinkertons? From Red Dead I Redemption just found too. out that those still exist. Yep, yeah, that's that's where I'm going. What? Wait, I thought they died out in Red Dead Redemption Two era. Whatever that was. They are still no. around. Shockingly, not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wizards of the Coast just hired them to scare and intimidate and confiscate a guy's Magic the Gathering booster boxes. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? For yeah. What? This company cannot sink itself faster, and I am all for it. Uh. To answer your question, Kaya, he purchased a set of boxes called March of the Machine from his uh, his dealer, his plug. Uh, unfortunately, his dealer isn't the most savvy with magic and ended up sending him unreleased product called March of the Machine, The Aftermath, which is coming out in three weeks. So uh, Wizards of the Coast came after the guy who bought it because he's a YouTuber and he posted a piece of content about it and they sent it, without ever communicating with him, sent the fucking Pinkertons to his doorstep, made his wife cry, threaten about jail time, and then st steal his fucking booster boxes back, or reclaim it, rather. Why the, why the fuck was that first thought the Pinkertons? I know, that's what I was saying. So from the 18, it's because they're from the 1850s and they were started by a man named Pinkerton. Well, no, I know. What? He's asking why is Wizards of the Coast first decision to go uh, to the Pinkertons? Yeah. Jesus, I misheard is why are they first called the Pinkertons? Like oh, God. Is it, is it Never dumb? mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was so wild. All over what some fucking fuck? trading cards. When So do we know what they look like when they show up? Are they still wearing like the bright red uniforms and like <laughs> they had muskets six yeah. shooters and shit like that a blunderbuss <laughs> at the front doorstep <laughs> through the people <laughs> they, they when they knocked mustache. on his door they they unrolled a paper and said we hereby decree that you are in unlawful <laughs> possession excuse what me is this actually do if the pinkerton show up <laughs> yeah. cry. literally cry apparently his wife his wife was terrified and he <laughs> called the heavy it? hitters It'd be like Do if the Knights any... of the Round... Someone shows yeah. up at your door, they're like, we're the Knights <laughs> of the Round. You're like, the fucking excuse me? Yeah, well, I'd, first of all, I'd be wondering if I like fell into some like time temporal rift or something, got sent back 200 years. But also, like, do they have any kind of like actual jurisdictional you know, power or anything? Like, what what do they do? That's what I yeah. can't fully wrap my head around because they're not they're not police officers. Like, there's no nah. way they have a warrant, right? Like, that they, wouldn't make sense. They're essentially security guards in a way. Yeah, yeah I mean, but back, can you have a guy... I think in the 1800s they were, like, uh, hired by the government, I think, right? Or the FBI or whatever. Well, yeah, so they, they were, like, you know, hired muscle, essentially back then i think but i don't know about now surely not 
Yeah, like, I can't hire a security guard to, like, break into your house and take your shit. Yeah. <laughs> so... I don't know how Jesus it works. Jesus Christ. I don't either. I don't fully understand it, but it's really comical to me that Wizards of the Coast is like, you know who we need to solve this? Yeah, the, the Pinkertons. Pinkertons. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen their rebrand as well? Like, the Pinkerton logo currently? It kind of looks pretty cool, but also, like, messy. Uh, I haven't seen their new logo, but they actually sued Red Dead Redemption 2 because they didn't like that they were had a bad reputation. <laughs> yeah, the, the main antagonists in the game. Yeah, is it fucking adorable? They're like, we're not bad guys, so they sued. Yeah, classic. Well, that is something to be thankful for. I like that. Was there a happy resolution with the Magic the Gathering thing? No, he got all of his boxes taken, and when he contacted <laughs> oh, no. Wizards... He I, the, the guy's his name's old school MTG. He seems like such a fucking sweetheart. When he contacted nice. Wizard, he was like, "Oh, they were so nice and apologetic. They even offered to reimburse me a little bit with some uh, with some product." And I was like, <laughs> "Brother, you just got for sending the loan sharks to his house." Yeah, yeah. that's 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 he's in PTSD. All, but that's he just, also like he just got uh, fucking know. shaken down. Yeah, that's not. That's not good behavior. <laughs> he literally got shook down, his wife crying, threatened with jail time by the fucking Pinkertons. He's like, well, you know what? They were laid back. <laughs> Thank you, wizards. I, you I literally... Yeah, you shouldn't accept the fucking uh, reward from <laughs> from wizards for them shaking you I down. Don't, I really pretty... don't blame them, though, because it has to be a scary yeah. situation. You don't want to, like, kick the hornet's nest again because wizards oh, already yeah, employed true. the... He already employed the Pinkertons. Yeah. I mean, next, it's probably going to be fucking Sam Fisher showing up, like... It's it's only yeah. getting more and more escalated. I really hope this sinks wizards finally. I, I it's hope not. that it no, it won't. It truly, <laughs> truly won't. But boy, do I hope it hurts them. Speaking I fucking of hate that company. Punishing people and being shitty companies. Have you guys kept up with what you guys remember that Nintendo hacker called Bowser, whose name was actually Gary Bowser. Bowser? Yeah. Have you guys kept up with what Nintendo has done to him? I've kept up with it. That shit is oh, fucking God, foul. Yeah. Is that the guy that's basically an indentured servant to Nintendo <laughs> yes. for his life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. So, for those who don't know, Gary Bowser... <laughs> wait, wasn't Gary Bowser the CEO? I thought this guy's white. No, that's the CEO. Different yeah. Bowser. Doug, Doug Bowser's the CEO, I believe. Oh, of, yeah. Uh, okay. Why does so many Bowser's Bowser's the hacker? attached to Nintendo? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. So many fucking Bowsers. Anyway, this guy went to prison for basically selling like hacked ROMs or some shit, and he made about three hundred thousand dollars in profits. Nintendo won the case for a total of ten yeah. million dollars that he now owes them. This man is apparently in his fifties; he's never gonna be able to pay this back. <laughs> he was in prison uh, for forty months, and he Bowser says Nintendo can take twenty-five to thirty percent of his income for the rest of his working life. They began the process while he was still in prison. Like many American inmates, Bowser was able to work a job for what's essentially spare change while behind bars. And over the course of his time at the SeaTac Federal Detention Center in Washington, he was able to pay back $175. Yeah, he's he's already bad. making a dent in it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, slow clap for him. He's... It's a, yeah. They already make like what, a cent and a half a day printing license plates or whatever the fuck they have inmates do, just breaking down rocks with big hammers, like a cartoon. Yeah. And Nintendo put their big hands in his fucking pockets. I'll take some of that. His money. <laughs> do you think a check arrived each week, whatever, for like two cents? <laughs> he has to pay it back monthly. Like he actually has to check in monthly with 25 to 30 percent of his income. And you then think you that's have on top this... of tax, obviously. That's like eighty yeah, percent of your is income now... going to tax and Nintendo. Christ. Yeah, he's now living for the rest of his life with a Nintendo tax. <laughs> it's just siphoning his income. It's so fucked up. Is that at least tax deductible? <laughs> like a charity I wouldn't donation? Think so. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. I, I I guarantee this man is just like turbo fucked. <laughs> On one hand, yeah, that's insane. On another hand. Dude, who fucking sells pirated software? Like, yeah, that, that kind of goes against the whole stupid. spirit of it, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, what a piece I, of shit. I, Especially I totally against get... Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the most ruthless company in video gaming. You have to be s some special kind of stupid. Even among, like, hackers, because, like Lyle mentions, usually if you're going to be, like, pirating stuff or jailbreaking, you usually don't charge for it. It's not usually, like, right. a for-profit yeah. thing. So his team, he wasn't like the founder or anything. He was actually just one of like three people. Oh, he people. was a fall guy. 
Yeah, he was pretty much the fall guy they wanted to make an example of. Yeah. The team was team executor. So they actually went a step further. They had um, DRM in their jailbroken software. So if other people tried to hack it, it would brick their console or something. It was crazy. Jesus Christ. See, when they they do their own cheating software? Yeah. Oh, that's that's fucking great. Yeah, that was fucking vicious. See, when people <laughs> normally do this kind of shit, they do it for, like, sound reasons on the whole. Yeah, like, oh, preservation of software. Yeah, preservation of software, anti-competition laws, etc. You can, you can like, argue it, but the instant you start selling it... Profiting, yeah. Yeah, using another person's about two hardware. Entirely different things. Yeah. Pirates and cheater hackers are not the same thing. Like, a pirate, yeah, will upload your favorite TV show just for the sake of it, but... There is a dedicated subgroup of hackers who just dedicate themselves to creating cheats. Like, mm-hmm. oh, for, sh- for sure. But uh, just to sell it for oodles of money to help people cheat at like League of Legends and s- as such. Yeah, it totally. sounds like this guy was one of those. Yeah, like a cl- kind of. Classical pirate. Kind of. It was, he was jailbreaking. It, it fundamentally, like, the big service was jailbreaking for like the Switch, but they also did it for uh, other consoles as well. Well, then, yeah, that's completely different than just mm. piracy. Um, but even still, even in that, even in that territory, in yeah. that space, it, it, among pirates, that team was very controversial for like the DRM kind of shit. Yeah, so I was gonna ask. It, it was a team, but the other people caught and put behind bars or anything like that. Uh, as far as I know, Gary Bowser is the only one that faced right. any repercussions like this. New theory. New theory. This was all a money-making oh. scheme by Nintendo. They set him up to be the full guy. <laughs> they, they had their team in on it, and then they pulled out and like. Put him behind so bars, and now they, they hired the Pinkertons to lure this guy into this world. <laughs> it's going full yeah. circle. Yeah, they collaborated with the Wizards. As team executor and Bowser's defense, on the other hand, claimed that he was, quote, the least culpable of the three arrested members of team executor and was only being used to, quote unquote, send a message because his co defendants reside in countries that may not extradite them. Oh. Right. Okay. That actually makes sense. I guess Nintendo's long arm of the law does not reach to fucking Thailand or wherever. Let this be the lesson to you, children. If you're going to commit cyber crimes, do it in the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, Move move to somewhere where you can't, where Nintendo can't reach you, basically. Nintendo is fucking ruthless. They don't care about people at all. They are so ruthless. Yep. Other That's other insane. companies, other companies on the whole stance with that kind of stuff. It's it's you know it's hit or miss. Like some things they'll be like, oh that's great, keep doing it, or hey come work for us, work on that tool in our house. Like Sony and uh, Valve often do that, but Nintendo, nope, the immediate just don't touch your shit, don't fuck with it, don't mess with it, or you're done. They start that's looking it. into other whether the death penalty do... is available in that country or not. Yeah. Like, <laughs> other companies literally offer over. rewards for every every modern yeah. company nowadays has something called a bug bounty program where they will literally pay you to find weaknesses in their software. Discord yep. has it, Microsoft, Tesla, every big company. Nintendo, the moment they catch you, I guess they just take turn you into a literal slave. Yeah. Which is yeah. awesome. I'm, I, so like, I agree. Obviously, it's illegal and the guy should face punishments, but garnishing his wages for the rest of his life by 30 percent so that's ridiculous. my my stance on it was he served 40 months already that is plenty of punishment for fucking jailbreaking a switch yeah mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. could he does he have any legal recourse to like appeal this or try to get it re as far as i know he can try and make a case in like bankruptcy court or something mm-hmm. but uh, i i'm not well versed in this field to know and i feel like if he did try nintendo would actually probably sink the sick the pinkertons on him like legitimately (laughs) i'm curious where they're getting this figure of how much he pays them couldn't he hypothetically just show all the profits they made and go here take it they had a number on it right they they said he made 300 grand like they're he says septupling it so he says that he made that much. Nintendo claims that the group, the team as a whole, made 65 million. Uh, or oh, sorry, they don't them, believe 65 that. million in losses. Yeah, how would they know? The I do not losses. believe yeah. that at all. Have you ever looked at your own social blade? There's no fucking way. Yeah. Plus, can they, can they really claim that in good faith? Are you sure they're not just saying they project that they lost 65 million in damages? Yeah, it's, that's overblown no, that out of the saying. fucking water. Compare how many people own a Switch to how many people had even heard of these guys. Like, there's no way. 
$65 million. No so fucking the, way. I, if I had, I didn't look into where that number was pulled from, but so I think what they're doing, how they reach that is they took the idea of jailbreaking where you can now load pirated games onto the Switch so you get a bunch of free games and they probably just took like the amount of games in their catalog and multiplied that by like an X amount of customers and this yeah, is how much probably. money they lost. Yeah. But I, Jesus I, Christ. I can't imagine it's 60 million plus dollars worth that, of loss. Yeah, that would that would assume if the, if that's how they're doing it, that assumes that every person who bought that software downloaded the entire Nintendo eShop. And then played it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's no probably way. what they're arguing. Like the person had the capability to do that, if they wanted to, they could download the entire eShop or I whatever. Guess, yeah, that's a yeah, that's a good point. Didn't Nintendo just recently shut down one of their eShops for the 3DS or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah. shut down yeah, uh, the indie games and whatever from 3DS and Wii U. I think it was. Yeah, just the whole eShop got shut down. I think. So what do you do if you want to? So you can't buy games anymore for those consoles? No. Unless it's physical? Only physical copies, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, fuck you. <laughs> you deserve piracy. <laughs> well, yeah, this that's is what, why piracy is noble. Yeah. Fuck Nintendo. I like, honestly, I mean, that's, not to harp on too whole... much about it, but Nintendo is the worst video game company. Like, most that's unethical. That's the whole um, debate we have pretty regularly of their whole stance on ROMs and emulation, where it says, hey, you are not providing a means for me to buy this game. This game I want, I have no way of buying it from you. So now I will download a ROM of it and an emulator. And then they go, oh, you can't do that. That's illegal. But it's like, okay, what the fuck else am I going to do? How else do I get it? You wait 32 years and then they'll release it on some eShop yeah. for another console that will get discontinued. Oh, yeah. on, a, on an emulator um, that doesn't even function properly like the N64 yeah. on the Switch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. It's just so bad. It's so stupid. It's all so stupid. It's just evil. It honestly is. It really, really is. <laughs> it's so needlessly evil. It's a company that makes billions of dollars. It's not sending an example to anyone. It's just, it's just mean. <laughs> it's so mean. Yeah. What I would guess you, you rather have? To, like, have? Exert your power to like control your copyrights or whatever. Like Show that you've got the capability. To prevent other people but like you've done it he, he was he was guilty and he, he spent 40 months in jail <laughs> that should be enough what would you rather have to legally navigate this 65 million dollar lawsuit against you or have the pinkertons come to your house pinkertons pinkertons for sure what, so. what are they gonna do we've already said that what did they put their power they'll just stand out there and like wave their fists at me yeah i don't think they have any <laughs> like legal precedent I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, they can still just beat your ass, though. Like, what the fuck are you? Uh, like, huh? I mean, like, yeah. do you not have like a like a burglar plan? Wouldn't that just be equally applicable yeah. to Pinkertons? Like, you don't have a trap closet or like a, like hidden knives. Yeah, is that not a normal thing people do? I'm that's, sorry, that's it, not. I just thought that this was like pretty regular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. He knows. Yeah. We've talked about like what we do in the event of like an emergency. And I think almost all of us said we'd just like break a window and jump out. <laughs> so that'd be like the worst plan with the Pinkertons. Oh, uh, no, I got I got like a whole the first person who tries to break into my house is going to be like taste testing some shit. Let me just tell you, <laughs> I've got I've got big ideas. Can you, you share any of them? machine? <laughs> <laughs> He's got the Macaulay yeah, I mean, Culkin oh shit. Oh my god, this guy... So this guy <laughs> apparently was also malnourished in prison and lost 90 pounds. And... What the fuck? How he how fat is this dude? I mean, Nintendo His didn't say says... how to do that. Now he's just being <laughs> yeah. dramatic, I think. Well, to His be fair, the is, lawsuit... He was down to 320 pounds. He had lost 90 pounds. Holy shit. Wait, down Good to? for him. Jesus, yeah. wait, he was like 450? He was like 410, apparently. Oh my god. He also says that he has to smear coffee and paste into his skin wounds because he keeps getting lesions, I guess, in prison. Man, this this guy's okay. life is just he's Sisyphus now. He's just a little cuck slave for Nintendo. That sucks. Yep. 
do you think he uh like once he starts getting money back or starts making money enough to afford stuff do you think he'll still buy the newest nintendo products or do you think <laughs> he's gonna want to play zelda yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he, he wants right. breath of the wild he can't resist he's he's Not buying yet. two things when he's finally out of this situation breath of the wild 2 and the newest magic the gathering machine set that's all he wanted I, I'm honestly I, surprised that Nintendo didn't give them the full like sex offender treatment where they ban people from computer devices and the internet. I have to they register as a Nintendo meal. hacker. There's <laughs> <laughs> a database. You, you can't come within 100 feet of a GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell your neighbors. <laughs> oh, that's great. Anyway, that wasn't my things I like. Yeah, that, that was mine from uh, Magic the Gathering, so whoever wants to go next, please feel free. Uh, well, to go along with that, the thing... I, well, wait, is it things I like or things I'm thankful for? I guess it's the same thankful, thing. Thankful for, yes. Yeah. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah, the thing that I liked this week was the Dungeons & Dragons movie. Have you guys seen that? It was no. good. I, I'd, I'd, I'd be assaulted by the Pinkertons to watch that one again. It was actually surprisingly good. I thought it was going to be shit, but it was just a fun movie. So that's what I'm thankful for. There's no interesting story about it. Okay. Who was next? Kaya? So we're making the order. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> I'm thankful that I'm done with the Twilight series. Yay. It wasn't even fun bad. <laughs> it was just <laughs> tedious towards the end. Wait, why did you watch him? Were you, are you doing something with it, or was it just to hurt yourself? Maybe it's jerking off. It's the only no, way my wife get, said, no, trust that. me, it's really funny. You're going to la uh, like laughing at it. And we sat down to watch it, and it, it was not that funny. It was just painful. The fourth movie is literally just a romance movie with nothing happening. I thought they were all romance movies, yeah, allegedly. They are. Uh, they are, but the I fourth away one for a minute. specifically is so... Twilight. He's talking about Twilight. I'm done with it. I love it. I love Twilight. Fuck yeah. You said How? you're done with it? How? Yes. How did you watch <laughs> the fourth one, Breaking Down Part 1? It, like, 90% of it is a romance movie where they just get married and then go on a honeymoon and nothing is happening. Whoa, that's one of the best parts. What, when she immediately gets pregnant after reluctantly playing cat and mouse with Edward's dick? What? That's an incredible- Yeah, that's like an hour in. Before that, you have to suffer through an hour of a wedding reception. Okay, then how about in the very beginning where uh, uh, Bella's very, like, distraught about the, the wedding and everything, and Edward's like, I got you a present, and it's Jake so he can get cucked again? What? <laughs> like, how did you not enjoy this? Jake's whole deal, Jake's whole deal was the funniest part about the last two movies, in which Jake, um, what the fuck was his name? The daughter's name? Renevier, Renizi. Oh, Renez, Renez May. Okay, yeah, so they have the baby and Jacob and Prince on her. Jacob being this, like, 18-year-old boy and the baby being, you know, a literal newborn two days old. And he imprints on her. And Bella gets mad at him, says, what the fuck, she's a baby. What's wrong with you, you pervert? And he says, it's not like that. And then in the last movie, he looks at Edward and goes, can I call you dad now? <laughs> it's like, wait, so it was like that. You actually do plan on marrying this girl. It was legitimately like that. They even planned their whole future together in the uh, the flashbacks. It was fucking so weird. How did you not like that? It was weird. That was so it was frustrating. <laughs> and then at the end, they have this massive fucking battle and, oh, whoops, actually it was just a vision. All a dream. They do that yes. whole switcheroo. That, you, are miss you are missing the forest for the trees here. Those two movies <laughs> are fantastic. They are so fantastically good. fantastically shit. Exactly. Yeah, they're well, that's bad, but they're also just tedious. I cannot sit through an hour of a wedding, dude. It, it, it was uh -huh. such a short wedding. What do you mean? It was really quick. I felt like an eternity to me. Maybe it's just me. I cannot. They stand usually that stuff. do. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah, you're just not true. a maybe you're not a wedding guy. Plus, maybe you weren't fully sold on the relationship <laughs> between Edward and Bella, which is why Jake was there at the end. I mean, I, I think it yeah, had everything. Edward and Bella and Jacob, the fucking polycule that they have going on, where it's just a semi-sexual, weird, incestuous thing, where one of them is like. The girl is fucking both of them, and then Jacob is about to fuck her baby daughter. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? Jacob, uh, no, uh, Edward finally at least lost that, like, powdered face. They finally stopped giving him white face throughout all of the movies in the last two ones. I guess they decided it looks too goofy. I mean, that's a plus, I suppose, but nothing else happens. I don't know, man. I, 
so as punishment for making me watch Twilight, we did sit down and watch Blade right after, and better vampire movie. I'll say that. I just, I, I mean, I don't remember good. Blade that well, but I just disagree. What? I, you, you, you can't uh. beat Twilight, to be honest. That that shit was so fucking good. Hey, Kaya, you remember the uh, the nightclub scene in Blade? Blade will never be done again. I, I don't. I do not have enough faith in Marvel to believe that the uh, new one that they're currently producing is going to live up to it. It's like the the party rave scenes in 90s movies are just... That era is over, in my opinion. I don't know but, what the uh, fuck they're going to play in today's movie. Like, maybe some trap music or rap. Up step. Yeah, I, I was bringing that up because that song that plays during the club rave gets stuck in my head randomly throughout all these years and I think it's one of the catchiest fucking electronic songs I've ever heard in my life. You know the one, right? Because all of it is great. Like, in the first one they have this rave scene where they turn on the sprinklers but instead of water it's blood and they blood, call it yeah. blood bath and they just have this cool fucking party. In the second <laughs> one it's basically the same except it's a lot of lasers and they have techno music playing and then there's this one scene where a girl puts a razor blade in her mouth and starts making out with some dude. It's like, that shit was so fucking dope, especially for its time. I need to rewatch those movies. You do, yeah, just we don't have an industrial one. scene shit. like we used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, music's changed. Sure has. Yeah, I know, it always makes us sound like fucking boomers, but I feel like all of this shit can be generated by AI now these days. All the music you hear, it already sounds like it has been generated by AI. I'm not gonna disagree too hard with that, honestly. <laughs> you won't get a big argument just from me either. The average music you hear, like, there's good stuff, but if you just are out and about and you overhear somebody listening to their music on their phone or their car or just a group of teenagers who are listening to something, it's such garbage. It was just created it's like mass psychic appeal. damage. Yeah. yeah. I definitely had an old guy moment where I was in a grocery store and they were playing like the Backstreet Boys and I didn't recognize Ooh. that it was the Backstreet Boys, but I was like, oh, these guys are like actually singing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and then I realized what it was, and I just like stared into my hands for a little bit. Something, something on that that I always think about. It always disappoints me. Is why is it every time a like car with loudspeakers drives by, it's never anything interesting. It's always, always like rap or trap or pop music. Maybe on occasion some country or hard rock. But I want to hear, I don't know, I want to hear someone blast like anime themes or polka or just something weird, you know? I you see never some see some guys that. like rock up in a big fucking car blasting a Macy's commercial and catcalling yeah. a girl. Fuck yeah. I want to see dudes driving around in a car <laughs> like that bumping fucking bass and it's like Weird Al Yankovic or something. Like, I, I want that. I've never seen that happen organically and it disappoints me every time. I, I don't think it'll ever happen. That's just not the kind of song you listen into at full blast with the windows down. You yeah, don't blast people are Albuquerque boring. fucking... Oh, maybe do. Albuquerque or the ultimate yeah, showdown on, or something. Come on, man. You gotta, you gotta blast that fucking shit. You wouldn't blast Skipper Dan at like 900 decibels, I don't would. Don't blast anything. I don't know what it is with Americans too, but you do it way more than Europeans where you just, just some asshole yeah. will be, the, like, the terminal will be all quiet with people trying to sleep because their flight is in like five hours, so they're just stuck waiting. But there's gonna be one douchebag piece of shit listening to loud mumble rap on his fucking phone echoing throughout the place. I don't know why you guys do this or why it's just so normal here. It's so infuriating. Because America is good old me, me, me. It's all about what you want. Doesn't matter what other people care. Gotta love yeah. it. Get used yeah, to brother. it. Yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah. And we wouldn't have it any other way, you pussy. Hell yeah. Yeah. I drank a Natty Light the other day, so I'm feeling real patriotic. Are you back in the drinking? Why, why were you drinking Natty Light? We did a beer tier what list, so I... Light? It's the worst beer of all time. Yeah, I was like, is there something like wrong in your life? <laughs> yeah, it was for a beer tier list, so I had to re <laughs> horrify myself with Natty Light and all the other trash Fucking piss beer. You. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I've definitely moved away from it. Although I, my drink now is like vodka Red Bull. 
Ooh, uh, because I'm perpetually shit. like fucking 17. Yeah, I was good say. shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> classic. I love that. On this show, we've many times praised vodka. It just works with everything. It's not yeah. just like to be fair, vodka Red, Red Bull, Bull does taste good. It, it's like super easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, not, but, like, I'm not being ironic. I love vodka Red Bull. I think it's a genuinely great choice because it amps it you the a... fuck up and gets you drunk. Yeah, yeah. and dehydrates that's why the shit out of you. Yeah, that's, that's why 17 year olds drink it. He was right though. <laughs> so, how do you feel about vodka Coke then, Lyle? Oh, God. I don't drink soda. So I don't really like it, but uh, yeah, vodka mixes with fucking anything. I, anything. Yeah. Vodka is the only alcohol that you can like puke your guts up with and not have like a like a memory yeah, association. Yeah. You know, like you you yeah, puke this... up Jaeger real bad, you're never drinking it again. But you you puke up uh -huh. vodka, it's just like oh, it's you know, it's a uh, thing. I'm to be to be fair, Jaeger is like the worst offender. It just yeah. such sugary slop. It's basically it feels like you're drinking molten sugar cubes. I feel like Jaeger and Fireball. If you ever have like a bad night with either one of those, you're just never drinking them again. People, oh, really you didn't know me are, in college, Jesus Christ. People are quick oh, yeah. to jump the gun, hating on Fireball, and I don't know why. I think it. Oh no, tastes I love Fireball. It's, nice. it's just a very distinct thing. What it's yeah, see, the taste. I, and like, I, yeah, I have a few people I know where they're like, yeah, I, I like Fireball, but so many people I talk to, they're like, ugh, Fireball, ugh, yuck. Why? No, it's good. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm. I'm not saying that. I'm just mm. saying that if you throw up a lot of it, you remember that. Mm. It, you know, it's at the top of like my puking every tier list. But vodka, though. You were right when you said like vodka is the only drink where the aftertaste really doesn't exist when you're throwing it up. Yeah, or it exactly. Doesn't, like, I, burn that bad. I got really drunk, and I don't know if this is a tip or just a happy accident. I got really drunk, and I ate a bunch of fucking Lucky Charms. I'm talking like a full box of <laughs> Lucky Charms. <laughs> um, and I, I fucking got way too drunk, and I puked that shit up. And the Lucky Charms just kind of like absorbed it. So it was like throwing up a, a really pleasant cloud. I would recommend that if you're going <laughs> to, you know. Wouldn't that be really chunky, of lucky like charms. throwing up marshmallows? Yeah, that's basically exactly what it was. That sounds delightful. But it also, it, it also like intook, I think, like the alcohol. So it just kind of, I don't know, it worked out surprisingly well. It was refreshing almost, sounds like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you enjoyed <laughs> it. Pleasant. You liked it more it's, than drinking. It's good enough to where like now. I recommend it to people, you know? I don't do that with most, most throw ups. I just kind of go, eh, you can avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have a drink that you think is the most overrated? Of like mm. alcohol, yeah, anything yeah. rum related. I think rum is very. God, you suck. Yeah. Yeah, IPAs, oh. rum and gin. Rum, rum and is gin. so tasty. No, that's yeah. wrong. Rum is great. Like rum no, yeah, I'll, I'll join rum in the makes you feel warm so and happy good. inside. Yeah. It's relaxing. Especially spiced rum. Oh. Yeah, mm. so good. Rum's just delectable. Like no matter what context, when you have it, you just feel good. Just makes and you feel nice. What about like nice. fruity drinks? Do you like those? Those are usually rum. Like uh, like the cocktails, like pina coladas or daiquiris or whatever. Oh, oh, like daiquiris and shit. I mean, that's fine. I, I keep in mind it's been many years for me, so I don't yeah, even remember what half of that shit tastes like. No, I, I would still say vodka beats those. Like a vodka and coke is still better than a rum and coke. Anyway. Yeah, Dep depends. I, 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 I will maintain that drinking hard liquor is easier than drinking a fucking IPA, and then yeah. If you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, it's 11%, dude, just do a shot, man. I don't know. There, that's probably what I would I would say on the chain of alcohol that I just I don't care for. Really, really intense beers that just aren't I even hate pleasant beer. to drink. Ugh. I hate beer in general. What is, an, yeah. so what is an IPA? I know it's like a beer term. What, what does that mean with beer? Uh, I, I don't know exactly, but Indian I think they're just made ale? with like a bunch of hops. I mean, I could tell you what they taste. Oh, they taste just... like fucking perfume. Um. Yeah. But yeah, like uh, yeah, they're just they're just like really bitter. They they have lower calories. I think I remember somebody using that as an excuse. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm it, thinking about when I'm drinking like, beer. A lot of <laughs> it is the IPA diet. Yeah, the calories. Yeah, fucking a lot of people do it for image. Like, a lot of people <laughs> drink IPAs and shit like that to say that they're drinking an IPA. Well, yeah, I know that's, that's like, kind of how I feel about it. 
Beer yeah. itself is like its own hobby at this point, just yeah. beyond alcohol. And, and I don't doubt are... that some people have Stockholm the syndrome themselves into genuinely they, liking it, but I don't, I don't think have, anybody man. likes it at first. No, they absolutely have. So there, there's a lot of variety of beers, and a good number of them taste good or neutral or, you know, oh, I could get into this, but some of them, they're just genuinely foul. Just not good. And yet they p have fans who go, oh, this is a real beer, not like that other stuff. And it just tastes like ass. <laughs> yeah, I have a, yeah, it's like local brewery shit. I have a friend who, um, shout out Mitch, who loves like these small niche beers and stuff. And he was showing me some of them. And one of them was like an apple crumble beer. And I'm like, that sounds disgusting, but he swears by it. No, I so like I those are stuff. fun. Yeah, there's no, a local oh, brewery man. that does like a blueberry one that sometimes I'll be like, "That's, Ooh, that's nice." That. There's yeah. a um, the beer that sounds nicer. That sounds nicer than apple crumble. The beer that I always went to when I drank pretty regularly was not your father's root beer, and it was a beer that tasted like root beer, and it was fucking delicious, and I loved it. And I pounded them. Mm. Yeah, they they get good. They make good varieties. So that wait, did we come to a consensus on what the most overrated alcohol is of all time? Because we're split mm. on rum, so it can't be rum. I, I think we, we all kind of agreed on IPA, it. right? Or was yeah, that probably, unanimous? Probably IPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. I guess that counts. That's like the I only know. thing I can't drink. I could sooner drink urine than an IPA. I just have such a visceral reaction to it, man. It's so yucky. Yeah, I think if we're talking overrated, like most other beers have people that are just like, this sucks. Like if you want like yeah. if you want people to talk shit about like Bud Light or Heineken, like you could find them pretty mm -hmm. easily. But yeah, if sure. you say you don't if you say you don't like IPAs, <laughs> everybody loses their mind. That that was the line from the Dark Knight, Lyle. You're yeah, right. Yeah, he's he's he I remember. says I the music here is too loud and I wanna leave. <laughs> I don't like this beer. Do you have anything else? Yeah. When he was saying that's, my that's, father was you, a drinker. How do you like my joker who complains at a party bit? Yeah, that's pretty good. You think that's it's good enough good. to print? It's very good. <laughs> you should do that for the rest of the episode. I should, yeah. That, <laughs> that would endear me to everybody. <laughs> the anti-Lyle crowd coming out making more arguments in the comments. Yeah, I, I yeah, should have mentioned them... that on Oni Plays, I exclusively talk in a Heath Ledger Joker voice. <laughs> um, uh, that's good. Uh, do we have anything else? or uh, Unless you've got some more questions for Lyle, or any questions for Lyle. Oh yeah, is there a chat? Is there a chat? Are there we supposed is. to be reading that? I, I, Shit. No, 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 no. I read <laughs> questions from you guys to Lyle. Oh. Well, not you. <laughs> Lyle, do you I have any questions for yourself? <laughs> Why am I here, man? Do you have a question? Oh, we should talk about Jackson. Clown Room. Charlie's in Clown Room. Oh, yeah. yeah. That shit went hard. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, I actually watched that. That was funny. That, that cartoon, I will say, I, I pitched it around a lot like I, I I I told a lot of people about the idea and none of them fucking laughed so I I just kind of like barreled through it and made it and there were it, it, because it's like there's not really a joke it's just a thing that happens three times but uh, it, I think even Charlie when when you did the voices for it I'm like just trust me on this like the clown is gonna go oh this is gonna be funny and you're like, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I'm like, always up for any of that kind of shit. Yeah. I, I was sold just when you asked me to be a part of something, even before I knew what it was. Hell yeah. I thought well, it was great, yeah. I'm glad I didn't tell you. <laughs> but no, so is, that yeah. how, is that how your content works? You just have an idea and then you start uh, hiring like animators to, to, to you know, bring it to pretty life? Pretty much, yeah. Like, it's it's usually pretty straightforward. I, I have a lot of buddies that are animators that like, I don't know if you know anything about the animation industry, but like it's very gig economy and people are constantly between jobs. So I just kind of say like, let me know when you're free and like, I'll put you on something. And that's, that's usually kind of how it works. Um, how do you, how do you fund it considering like, I doubt. Oh yeah, no, they, they make no fucking money. Doesn't make money. Yeah, yeah. I, I lose thousands of dollars every time I make one, but I, my logic behind it is, like I tried doing animation myself and it is uh, my hands were too small so I, I just kind of gave up 
And uh, I kind of figured <laughs> like I could probably the same amount of hours that I put in, you know, making other videos or uh, streaming or doing other things. I can probably make that money doing that and then pay an animator to make the cartoon. Uh, so that's been kind of the weird, like, like I play video games Logic. to afford working kind of deal. It's definitely identity crisis inducing, but uh, yeah, that's that's typically how it works. So you just, you, well, obviously you like the medium. I think it's a, a really well. smart yeah, flow, to be honest. And yeah, so I like is the it, medium. You like I, an investment. Yeah, mm. I, I kind of I kind of see it as like because that's the other weird thing is they're like lost leaders, right? Because like that's that's what people want to see out of my channel. They kind of tolerate the other content, but really they're there for like cartoons and stuff. So it's yeah. like, oh, well, I've got to number one and number two, like, I, I don't know. I, I figure like if I'm not doing something that's creatively fulfilling, I might as well work a desk job like. If I wanted to make money, I wouldn't be doing YouTube. I'd, I'd just have like gone to law school or I don't know, become an astronaut or like played basketball yeah. or something Easy that shit. I could have easily. Yeah. 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 Simple things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Stuff you do straight out of high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't have small hands, you can be yeah, an yeah. astronaut. Yeah. They measure well, those actually, first. No, I think astronauts, they want small hands, right? To fit in the space. Yeah. So actually I'm like optimal astronaut quite like qualities, yeah. but I'm afraid of flying. So it just didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. always, I mean, it's healthy. only flying for a Does little bit and then it's like space? floating. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, space is like flying plus. Fuck that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> space is uh, way more dangerous than just normal flying. <laughs> Elon Musk's uh, spaceship just blew up. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. P apparently it was like calculated. <laughs> it, or something ish. Well, no, I, I doubt they wanted it to blow up. Right? You don't want. I, well, I no, that, that was, was like never meant to be like successfully go to the Mars's orbit or anything, but yeah, it, re it veered off course, and once it did, they blew it up intentionally, quote unquote. Mm. Well, no, that's I what think he always they, fucking they says. I fucked up verification on purpose. I blew it up on purpose. I was supposed to do that. I mean, I don't want the to go off landing course. on towns and stuff. This well, is that's what I, I mean. Though, I don't so think this is political, but. Oh, that was, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry. I, I don't know if you cut me off or I cut you off. The Discord kind of cut out. You go, uh, Lyle. That's okay. You go. Yeah. I, I don't think this is political, but if it is, uh, disavow me publicly. Um, but yeah, there was there was like a fucking like Russian warship <laughs> that like Ukraine blew up and they denied that Ukraine blew it up. So they, they just said, oh, yeah, it just spontaneously combusted on its own. It's like, that is a hundred times worse. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the sentence, I don't think this is political. And then Russia immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I mean, it's just an objective more. They thing that, that the happened. They did the same it's thing funny. when a rocket landed in Russia or some bordering country. They did the same thing when Russia's bridge blew up. They blamed Russia for blowing it up. They blamed the same thing, the Nord Stream pipeline on Russia blowing up its own pipeline oh, yeah. for some reason whenever russia destroys its own infrastructure it's russia doing it which is quite an impressive way to win a war i guess but yeah, yeah the yeah, rocket yeah. blew up which is why i'm not going on any fucking spacex rocket anytime soon they need like a couple of decades of trial and error to figure out what they're doing well, yeah the, did the how is nasa's record with their first spaceships does it track they also had one. Uh, there was one that blew up. The Challenger blew up. Yeah, Chal yeah I know the Challenger was that kind was of manned. a thing. Yeah, that was different. That was manned. That's why that's so prominent. But I'm sure, yeah. like, the, the first actual rockets, the unmanned... I, I don't even know if they did unmanned rockets. I assume so. I assume they didn't go straight into manned rockets. Well, no, they did a lot uh, of monkeys. They, uh, they sent, oh, like, yeah, monkeys yeah. in. Wait, the were there monkeys on the one that just what blew was... up? No. Yeah, yeah it was a zoo. Oh, was there was two of, of every was... animal. They were supposed to repopulate Mars. <laughs> 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 We just try to send monkeys to Mars. Yeah. Isn't um, this also the biggest yeah, rocket ever built? Yeah, it's apparently like 40 stories high or some shit. Well, it was it's 40 stories high, yeah. Yeah, that, maybe yeah. that's why it fucking blew up. Maybe you're just not supposed to make them that big. <laughs> 
Yeah, God smited the rocket and said no. This is a modern day Tower of Babel. He didn't want it getting to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he started sweating. They're getting close. I have to blow it up. <laughs> they're uh, they're demanding rat stories in the chat. What does that mean? I, I don't know if this is enough to unpack with the short amount of time that we have, but I, uh, I lived in an auto shop that was converted into like a duplex. So it was just this big concrete box with uh, no windows, and it was constantly infested with rats. So I basically, if you don't kill rats, they, they basically multiply. So oh, oh. there was a point where, you know, when it was rat season, we had ant season and rat season. And when it was rat season, I, I genuinely think I killed like two to six rats on any given average day. Oh so my I have God. a lot of Christ. I have a How'd lot of rat stories. You have a lot of blood on your hands. Yeah, I mean, it, it progresses. I assume this is how, like, serial killers get started, but, like, you, it, it really does get easier the more you do it. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, when did you stop thinking of them as rats and more just, like, objects to place your rage upon or something? Yeah, I mean, like, that definitely happens. Like, you buy a box of cereal, and then you fucking open it up, and you, God damn it, and you feel less bad. Time to um, go to the rat room. Yeah, take my yeah, yeah. Out. It's like a rage room, but you just smash rats. But I, I definitely like I my my uh my prized rat story is uh I I had this like big ass like cowboy belt with a big belt buckle, and I was like in the process of taking my pants off, and one uh skittered across the floor, so I just took a swing at it, and I caught it in a corner and like brained it in the corner. So I have this picture of me holding this big cowboy belt, giving a thumbs up with like rat brains on it. There's like a dead rat. Holy it. shit. Yeah. You're an animal. <laughs> That's yeah, so yeah. cool. It, it, it definitely got to the point where like me and my landlord would send like dead rat pictures because sometimes the kills were like impressive. Like uh, a lot of the time. So rats will go for the bodies of other dead rats. So you can use them to lure other rats to each other. So you can like, just like people, I, I, had, yeah. I had a lot of occasions where like rat traps would catch multiple rats. I had one where I put a rat trap with, cause I didn't, I wanted to get more rats. So I just put another rat trap next to the rat trap that already got a rat and two rats simultaneously tried to eat that rat. So they, they both got caught in the same rat trap next to the previous rat. Oh, you had to be there. <laughs> I feel like I heard the word rat so many times that it lost all meaning. I was having a hard rat, time rat, rat. picturing exactly how this played out. It was like a daisy chain of rats. So it was like one rat was trapped in the rat trap and the other two rats were in the other rat trap that was also kind of clamped around the first rat. So it was kind of like a snake biting its tail. It was really poetic. I, I just, oh, so like human centipede, just right. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you did you get to the point? No, did no. You get I, to the I, point I, where it's this more was, like uh, lotus of lotus of life, lotus of death, lotus of rats. What the fuck is that? Lotus That's of a, blood. Uh, I I think it's a Buddhism thing. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. We're bringing Buddhism into the fucking rats. Look, look when you the killed Buddhist killed rats, principle of slaughtering you, rats, you start yeah. seeking spiritualism, so you know where they go, <laughs> so you can kill them again. You were making beautiful art out of their corpses. How casual did you get with this? Like, were you just picking up rats and squeezing them until they exploded or something? Like, you yeah, just it, don't even it, care it, anymore? It pretty much just kind of classified as cleaning after a point. <laughs> do you feel oh, bad about man. it now? Knowing that you were the, You know like, what? That's the... Cr yes, I do. Maker. But it's like, it's, it's really weird because it's like, my, my girlfriend doesn't like killing bugs or whatever. So I haven't Same. killed something in like probably like two and a half years, and it's oh, like definitely the there? yeah no it's good it's good it's but it's like I'll see people with like pet rats and stuff <laughs> and it's just like man there was a time when you and I would be mortal enemies but now I'm reformed <laughs> it's like have you the ever seen like Roroni Kenshin away. have you ever seen that shit what is it good ass nineties anime Roroni Kenshin I guess it was yeah. called Samurai X in Japan yeah I'm like that guy but with rats. <laughs> So you have a reversible blade that's facing the wrong way that you use Basically, to smack rats really hard? Yeah, and there are times when I'm tempted to turn the blade oh, and no. awaken, uh, <laughs> awaken the ratosai, but uh, no, it's uh, those days you, are behind me. 
I think pet rats are super cute and Me super too. like sweet. So, I, I found out that people keep them yeah, like I, don't know if I, I think they're, they're very different. adorable and apparently they do this. I, I don't know if that's something I tell myself to sleep, but I think they're different. I don't know. I just feel really bad for them. Apparently when they're really happy, they do this thing called popcorning where they jump up and down and then you realize yeah. oh, oh yeah, we torture yeah, like millions of these for science <laughs> every day and do all this fucked up shit to them. Yeah, I, um, see that's that's the thing is I dated a girl once who had pet rats, and uh, one of them was so friendly that when you would go to the cage, he'd run to the very top, it was like multi-tiered, and he'd run to the very top, and you'd open the little door, and he'd like, kinda, he wouldn't like lay down, but he'd like lean to his side, and he'd want you to scratch his tummy. Yeah, the, 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 yeah they're, they're super yeah. smart. They're, they're like borderline human intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> They're dumber than pigs, though. So if you eat bacon, you're a worse person than me. That's my justification I don't. for it. Bacon's <laughs> gross. I don't like pig, but I get your points. <laughs> oh well, look at you. I'm morally superior. No, I, for I, I, I actually, I'm not like I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan, and I eat bacon sometimes when I feel like it. But uh, I, I definitely try to avoid pig if I can. But sometimes I just don't wanna. Yeah, that's fair. I think I think bacon is, I think bacon is super overrated. Yeah, I agree. It is. I, I, like it I is. got the image that bacon is super tasty because of fucking Reddit when they were wrapping everything in bacon. Yeah, I. Oh god. I said at one point because I've never been like a huge bacon guy. I've just kind of like, I don't know. It's fine, but it's not. It doesn't need to be on everything. People put it on yep. way too much stuff, and I, I was like, I really think that bacon as a meme sort of like propagated it way past the point where it needed to be and then yeah. i kind of that that's actually when, a thing i think there was like an actual insider marketing thing from the meat market to there be was like, yeah it was that meat. and i think it was also just a way for like the redditor types to purchase some masculinity or larp as men basically like, oh, i'm such a big manly man i eat that's, bacon i grill bacon it was around the same time Kyle, where they were interesting take are you kidding? Well, yeah, I mean, he, he's that. not wrong. It was absolutely just a trend. On yeah, it was it, absolutely a trend, but I don't think like psychoanalyzing it to the point where they were trying to be masculine men. Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. Not I don't know. This I, was around the same time when they feel... were like worshipping weed, by the way. And Elon Musk. I'll never let Reddit lift this one down. When they were unironically calling Musk Rocket Daddy and Space Daddy. This was around the yeah. same time they were worshipping Yeah, bacon. you you brought up... When you mentioned Reddit and Bacon earlier, you brought up some, like, hard Vietnam flashbacks for me <laughs> of, like, when I was in college and we'd go on Reddit and just see people doing, like, oh, it's all about bacon and narwhals and Does Elon the narwhal Musk bacon and weed at midnight. And, midnight yeah, yeah, just the, the most embarrassing time in internet history when Reddit was, was trying to be after cool. the cake is a lie? That was after. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, like, that time in history when Reddit was trying to be cool and just was the most like you know reddit's still not great but they've kind of mellowed out a bit but man back then oh my god just the pure embarrassment from start mellowed to finish out a bit, they're far worse now now it's all political worse, i would yeah. way prefer they just spurg out about weed and how weed is a miracle drug that cures cancer those were the more innocent days as compared to now where they just want Absolutely. everyone dead reddit is awful yep. now it just keeps it's getting more worse and worse now. So well, that's just the internet in, in its yeah, entirety, Yeah, that's just though. the... Yeah. I don't think that's a Reddit thing. evolved into that. No, it is, Reddit is by far the worst offender. At least on, like, Twitter or something, you see the occasion. It depends on how you curate your timeline, but on Reddit, it's just wherever you look, it's just such fucking misery. I think I've I've got Charlie is kind of trying to leave, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've okay. got to head out. I, I didn't even look at the time. We can, we can wrap, though. Let's just wrap. All right, you can leave while we wrap. It's fine. Again, well, it was good to talk <laughs> to you again, Lyle. Thank you Hell for yeah, coming dude. on. Let's hit fucking Sea of Thieves at some point. Oh, I'm down. You guys sold me on it. It sounds great. It's, it's great. Yeah. All right, yeah. Bye, everybody. Check your flop side. Bye. See you, Charlie. All right, Lyle, do you want to shout out uh, your channel and where people can find you? Yeah, uh, you can find me at Wrath Club on YouTube. Uh, Lyle Wrath with an R on Twitter. Um, and you can check out my band, Petrified Giant. We may or may not have an EP, uh, EP and or single out right now. That's on everything that has social media. Uh, and there you go. And uh, am I, my new cartoon, uh, am I Clown allowed, Room. Lyle, am I allowed to spoil it a little bit? Is that okay? Uh, what do you mean by spoil it? The, the EP. Am I allowed to, to give a little take on it? Little. 
Oh, you, you mean talk about it? Yeah, uh, yeah, he's heard it, so he could tell you. Yeah, this this man sent me the EP, and I I would highly recommend it. It's it's very very well put together. I was really impressed with how dynamic of an EP it is. It it there doesn't just stay in one place at one time. Does a lot of different things. It's very very good. How many Thanks, tracks man. is it? Uh, the EP is only three because we just kind of we were making a full album, and then we just kind of got burnt out, and we're like, we need serotonin, so we're just kind of putting out three tracks on their own uh yeah. but the, the album will be longer and probably yeah. won't it'll give you the words of out. encouragement and good feelings to continue yeah on. well that's the thing is we've been working with like zero feedback so it's yeah i i'm just fucking excited for people to hear it and even if they're is like it? this fucking sucks exodus rip off fucking i i'm I, i'm here for it. i i just honestly want to see if people fucking like it or get get anything at this point but yeah, no, I'm super excited about it. I'm I'm really proud of the stuff that we we've done. That's awesome. All right, sweet. So uh, yeah, you can check that out when it comes out. It'll probably be already be out by the time this episode goes up. So yeah, where May can I find that again? Uh, Petrified Giant on YouTube, Spotify, Twitter, everything. Perfect. All right, awesome. Uh, that's it for the podcast this week. patreoncom slash podcast for bonus episodes. Lots of them over at patreon.com. We're releasing, we've, we've got a bit to make up for this last month. Uh, we've been a bit slammed with stuff. So we'll be putting out two this week or over the next two weeks. So there'll be two new bonus episodes going up. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode, which will be next week. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys have a good one. Until then. Bye. -bye. Goodbye, everyone. Hell Bye. Yeah. Bye.